it started with the first talk. Uh, it will be about the collision security of tandem DM in the ideal cipher model. The paper is by Zhu Yang Li, Ma Chai Stam, and John Steinberger. And the speaker will be Zhu Yang Li. Thank you. In this talk, I'm going to introduce, I'm going to present a new uh, collision security proof of the tandem DM compression function in the ideal cipher model. Uh, this is the joint work with Martin Stem and John Steinberger. And this is the tandem DM compression function. Here, each wire carries n bit information. So uh, this compression function make, uh, compresses an n bit message block by making two calls to the underlying block ciphers using two n bit keys. And this is a very old construction proposed by. Lay and Messi in 1992 at Eurocrypt workshop. However, its provable security has been elusive for many years, for about 20 years, until the first attempt was given at FSD 2009. And the next year, its extension was proposed at provable security workshop. However, in this paper, we exhibited flaws of the prior collision resistance proof. And we also presented a novel new security proof for the collision resistance of the tandem DM compression function in the ideal cipher model. Uh, however, in this talk, we are going to focus only on our proof technique rather than discussing the flaws of the prior proofs in detail. And we also note that our work was motivated by mostly historical interest rather than practical interest. Now, our security proof is given in the ideal cipher model. So let me briefly introduce this model. And in this model, an adversary is allowed two types of oracle query, an encryption query and a decryption query. And each oracle is usually simulated by lazy sampling. Uh, so in this example, the first query is uh, an encryption query with the uh, key K1 and the plain text X1. And this type of query is also called the forward query. And once this oracle rece receives this query, then its response is chosen uniformly at random from the set of NB strings. Here, each key is associated with its range and domain. They are all initialized as empty sets. And once the, this value is sampled, then it is added to this range. So later, the same point is not sampled again. This is because uh, each key has to define a distinct permutation in a block cipher. And then y1 is returned to the adversary. Then the adversary recalls a triple that consists of uh, uh, plain text and the key and the cipher text. And the second query is the backward query, uh, decryption query, and these are so called the backward query, and the, its response is uh, sampled in a similar way. And the third query is the is a forward query again. In this way, after making a certain number of Oracle queries, say Q queries, the adversary records, obtains a set of Q query response pairs. And this set is called the query history. And the query history determines every evaluation of a block cipher based compression function. Then, how this query history determines a valid evaluation of a tandem DM compression function? If we have two queries of this form, where B and L and R uh, ha has been shifted leftwise, then the first query can be placed at the top position, and the second query can be placed at the bottom position, forming a valid evaluations of the tandem DM that maps A, B, and L to A plus R concatenated with B plus S. 
Now, what is the goal of an adversary? The goal of a collision finding adversary is to find four queries satisfying these conditions. Uh, if uh, the adversary is able to find such queries in its query history at the end of the attack, then the first query can be placed at PL position. PL represent top left. And the second query can be placed at the bottom left position. And the third query can be placed top right position. And the fourth query can be placed at the bottom right position, forming two valid evaluations of the tandem DM that collide. And here A, B, L are different from A prime, B prime, L prime. So we have a collision. So the predicate call of Q is said to be true if and only if such queries exist in the query history by definition. So the probability of this predicate is exactly the same as the collision finding advantage of an adversary. So we want to upper bound this probability. Actually, we uh, want this probability, this probability to be small. We want to prove this probability is small. By the way, the four queries forming a collision might not necessarily be distinct. As an example, if we have only two queries of this form, then this query can be placed at the TR position and the BR position, and the second query placed at both TR position and BR position. And as long as A and B are different, we have a collision. So here, TR and BR queries are the same, and TR and BR queries are the same. So in this way, actually, we, so we can classify this predicate into three, time, three types according to the equality relations between the four queries. And in this talk, we are going to uh, focus only on the first case where all the queries are different because this case can be regarded as the hardest and the most generic case. So how can we upper bound the probability of this predicate? Uh, we use a case analysis. The general framework is to upper bound, is to first upper bound the probability that the i's query completes a collision as the last query. And then we can take a union bound by summing these upper bounds of all possible Q queries. And if the, these upper bounds are independent of each query, then we can just multiply Q. So we want to upper bound the probability of call I1. Now we use case analysis. By left-right symmetry, we can assume the last query is placed at either TR position or BR position. And we again distinguish two cases when the last query is obtained by a backward query and the last query is obtained by a forward query. So we have four subcases, and then we can uh, take a union bound again. So the probability of this predicate is upper bounded by the sum of the probabilities of these cases. And again, we, we, are, going to, we are going to focus on the first two cases where the last query is placed at the tier position because the other cases where the last query is placed at the beer position can be, seen, uh, can be analyzed in a similar way as the first two cases by rotating these diagrams uh, 180 degrees. Now we look at the first case where the last query is placed at the tier position and obtained by a backward query. 
Now, at the point when the last query is made, it is placed at the tier position, and at this point, this, since this, this query is backward, uh, the values B, L, and R are fixed. And there is a unique query in the query history to be placed at the bottom left position. So B and L and R uniquely determines the triples to be placed in this position and B plus S. Now we want to count the number of queries, number of triples to be placed in this position. Any query to be placed here should have the extra output of B plus S and the number of queries satisfying this equality is small. Say N most alpha except with a small probability. So here we, uh, we are excluding a bad event that this block cipher has a multi-collision with multipl multiplicity greater than alpha. So this probability is given as a function of alpha. And later we will optimize this parameter. Now once uh, each of such BR queries is, is given, then uh, this query uniquely determines the triple to be placed at the TR position and uniquely determines A prime plus R prime. Now, actually we wanted to restrict, we wanted to upper bound the number of possible responses here and in order, in order a collision to occur, its response should be the same as A prime plus R prime plus R, so that these two values are the same. So the probability of case one is upper bounded by alpha over two to the n minus Q, except with a bad event of a multi-collision uh, with multiplicity, multiplicity greater than alpha that we described at this step. So we have this upper bound, and now we look at the second case where the last query uh, is placed at the top left position and is obtained by a forward query. Here we uh, distinguish two cases again. The first case, in the first subcase, the BR query is obtained by a backward query, and the sub second subcase, in the second subcase, the BR query is obtained by a forward query. And this is a, a new and unusual element of our analysis because in a typical analysis, we don't care whether the queries already contained in the query history was obtained by a forward query or a backward query. Now we want to upbound the, we want to count the number of queries to be placed here. And each query to be placed here uh, should have a response of B. And the number of backward queries whose answer is B is, is small, say N most alpha, except with a small probability. Because B is the response of a query and always it's always a response of a local query is chosen randomly. So in this case, uh, and each of such queries uh, uniquely determines the response of R. So the probability of this subcase is upper bounded by alpha over two to the n minus Q, except with the bad event that we described in the second step. Now we look at the second subcase where the BR query is obtained by a forward query. And uh, as before, at the point when the last query is made, A, B, and L are uh, fixed because the tier query is a forward. Now we want to uh, upper bound the number of forward queries whose input block is B. But in this case, it is hard to probabilistically restrict this number because B is the input block, so 
the adversary is able to take control over the input flow. So actually we uh, want to eliminate this case and we can eliminate this case by slightly modifying our adversary and this is the, our, uh, this is our main idea. And uh, uh, modified adversary is simple, so uh, let me uh, describe how this modified adversary behaves. This modified adversary, A prime, runs uh, its original adversary as a subroutine and records its own query history, Q prime. And then whenever A makes a forward query, inclusion of B under the key L and R, the modified adversary makes the same query, same query, and an additional query, decryption of R under the key D and F. And when A makes a backward query, a decryption of R under the key B and L, then A prime makes the same query and an additional query of encryption of B under the key L and R. Then, what is the property of this modified adversary? First of all, uh, whenever A makes a query, A prime makes at most one additional query. So if A makes Q queries, then A prime makes at most two times Q queries. Furthermore, the query history of its original uh, adversary is contained in the query history of the modified adversary so obviously uh, the, the collision finding advantage of the, of the original adversary is upper bounded by the modified adversary collision finding advantage. And uh, the most important observation is that if A prime obtains the BL position of a certain evaluation by a forward query, then A prime will immediately make an additional backward query and place it at the top left position. In other words, in other words, if the tier position of certain evaluation is obtained by a forward query after the BR position is determined, then the BR query should have been obtained by a backward query. So this means our modified adversary does not create the second subcase that was hard to analyze. So this is our main result. Uh, this factor is the probability of bad event, and this is the probability of collision finding, uh, collision finding. And here Q is replaced by two times Q. And this here we observe that this factor is, an, is a decreasing function in terms of alpha, and this factor is increasing as a function of alpha. So here we have to optimize alpha in order to obtain the best upper bound. And as an asymptotic result, we have uh, the, collision, uh, the tandem DM compression function is turned out to be collision resistant up to the birthday bound, ignoring logo factor by using alpha to be to n over log n. And for a typical parameter, say n when n is 128, uh, we could prove the tandem DN compression function is collision resistant up to 120, one to, 2 to the 120 query complexity uh, with the threshold probability 1 of 2 by using alpha 16. So, uh, and as a final remark, uh, we, we obtained the same result using uh, typical analysis without these kinds of tricks such as modifying adversaries, but in this case, the uh, analysis becomes much longer than um, the proof we described here. And the, and the Bruce Foster proof, you can find it 
in our full version of this paper. And this is the end of my talk. Thank you. Are there any questions? Okay, so let's thank the speakers. Speaker again.